<laughs> oh, it was about time. Today, it's time for the full review of the Garmin Phoenix series, which include the tactics and the epics. Let's do this. Oh, it was about time. I'm so happy to do that video today. Uh, why do I make the review of those three watches together? It's because it's basically the same watch in different cases. Uh, they are, let's say, 95% the same, and there's a 5% difference, difference in each of them. So I think it's better to do one video and talk about that difference instead of doing three times the same video. <laughs> with those little difference. So you'll be able to see the, well, what is the difference and make a better choice after watching that video. Uh, this will be a very long video. If you look at the timeline just right here, uh, you will see that it's chaptered. So if you want to skip straight to a point that you want to hear about, well, you can do this. And if at some point I talk about something you don't care, well, you can skip to the next point. I won't be mad. So before we start, I have to say what kind of user I am to use those watch. I think it's important to say because not everybody is looking for the same thing in every watches. So what I'm looking into watch is something that looks great. <laughs> that uh, is a sport watch. So have the GPS built in and have many uh, features to track my activity. And I love the fact to have a smart watch, but it's not what I'm looking at first that doesn't mean it's not a great smartwatch it's not just what i'm looking for so the activity i do is uh, the most is uh, hiking walking and cycling uh, i do some running but it's not what i do the most um, so yeah I, I do probably all kind of activities but that's the one i make the most so that's the activities i tested with it so uh, for the rest of the video we will change of plan so you can see the watch better. So here we are into that camera angle. And yes, just before we start, I want you to uh, acknowledge that yes, the Apex does look way better than the two others. And it is, <laughs> it is looking way better. Uh, we will come on this later. But what I want to tell you is that at some point you probably you will have hard time to read what is on those screen and <clears throat> well it's not that bad in real life actually you see there is that reflection of the a big light i have over the camera and in some angle you're you are not able to see but with your with my eyes actually i can still see it so it's not this bad but yes the apex does look way better than the other <laughs> so let's start with the first point which is uh the quality the build quality uh everything uh here on those three watch is a great quality uh here we have the garmin phoenix 7 x sapphire solar this is the garmin tactics uh pro so the solar model and this is the Apex 2 uh, Sapphire model. Uh, okay, so <laughs> if we take those two, so the Phoenix and the Apex, uh, we do um, one more point. <laughs> you might realize that those are not the band that come with the watch, but we will come back on this later. So those two watch, the Phoenix and the Apex, does come with the same case. Uh, so same build quality in front and in back. So very, very good build quality. Uh, we have some screws at the back. There is no uh, screw on the front anymore like we had before. That's the Tactics Delta. So the previous model of that one. Uh, you see there were screws over there. Now they move it uh, right there in the corner outside of the bezel. Uh, it's the same thing of all of them. You can see it's it's the same case. It's it's the very same thing for the th the, th the three watches. 
the back the back is beautiful beautiful also very very well done uh, all great quality i think it says uh titanium you see here it says titanium so it's titanium in front and on the back uh there is that dlc cover they call it di diamond like carbon uh, that uh contour on th that bezel on the uh tactics model uh probably i would say that they are all as durable they are all as tough i don't uh worry to smash them uh i think they are very tough uh however i would say it's a guess but i would say that the bezel and the tactics seems to be more more scratch proof uh in fact if you look at my hold uh, Delta, there is still no scratch after wearing it for, I would say, over a year. Um, but none of them actually have scratches. So I would just say that it feel, feels mo mostly uh, durable, a bit more durable for that one. Uh, but except that, uh, the big difference between those two is the buttons. Uh, it's the same buttons on those two, but this one have a different kind of button. And I would say that those one are better, easier to press, uh, feels better to touch. Uh, the, the tactics buttons feels better. So that's a little difference between all of those three watches. Now let's talk about the glass. Uh, in those cases, uh, you, you have some options, but all of those three watches are uh, the model uh, are the Sapphire model. Uh, if we look at the tactics, you don't have the choice to have a Sapphire crystal screen, so that's not an option. If we go with the Apex, you have the option to have Gorilla Glass or uh, Sapphire Crystal Glass, and uh, same thing for the Phoenix. But all of those three are Sapphire Crystal Glass. Uh, if you go with the um, Gorilla Glass, you will have a mostly clear view of the numbers. Uh, it, it's just more clear. The thing with the Gorilla Glass is that you will probably scratch it someday. Uh, it's you will you will scratch it. <laughs> it's 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 for sure. Uh, the thing I love about Sapphire Crystal Glass is that it's almost not scratchable. And I say almost because, what? well, that's what Garmin says. But uh, I had so much, I, I did uh, knock my, my watches so many times. And few of them, I would not have been frustrated if my Sapphire Crystal gla Glass was scratched. And it just never happened to me. So it's almost not scratchable. So I, I love the fact that it's not. Uh, but yes, it comes with the fact that you got those reflection that you have less with uh, the Gorilla Glass. Uh, but that's the way it is. Uh, if you want to go with the Gorilla Glass, well, it's you have, you see, the, the glass is, is a little bit just under the bezel, so it's a bit protected, but you will probably scratch it someday. So in every case, it's a little bit uh, under it, uh, under the bezel, just a little bit. Now, let's talk about the look option you have when you buy the watch um well i would say that <laughs> uh, because it's it's the same watch it's the very same watch everything start with the phoenix and so so the tactics is a phoenix in a different case and some military option and the apex is a phoenix with a better display it's pretty much that's it so you do have a lot of options if we go with the tactics you have three options the first one is the base model so we got sapphire crystal glass and uh, that size of watch and if you go with the pro model you will have the uh, solar panel so it will help to make the battery last a little bit longer and you have the ballistic model which is um sapphire crystal screen also with the so the solar panel plus uh if you want to calculate the trajectory of a bullet well you can do that i never tried 
If you go with the Epix model, you will have the option to have uh, the base model, which doesn't have the Sapphire Crystal screen. And if you go with the Sapphire Crystal screen model, you will have two options of color. If you go with uh, th those two, watch the tactics and the Epix only comes into that size. You may have realized that uh, the Apex is a little bit smaller than my Phoenix. The Phoenix come in three size. That's the X, the same size as the Tactics. The Tactics only one come in X size. Um, so this is the regular size. The Apex only come into the regular size. That one is the X size. It also comes into the normal size. And it also come into the small size. So if you see a X, it's the biggest model. If you don't see anything, it's the regular model. And if you see a S, it's the smaller model. So that's really up to you. But if you take a smaller watch, it comes with a smaller battery also. Just consider that. But if you don't want to have that big rock on your wrist, well, you can take a smaller model. There's actually 16 options into the Phoenix series. Uh, if we exclude those one uh, and uh, it's the small, the normal, the big. And for all of them or almost you have the option to have or not the, uh, the Sapphire Crystal screen and the solar panel. That's really up to you. You also have some options about colors. All of those watches come with that band. So it's a silicon band. I'm not a huge fan of silicon band, but uh, they do the job. Uh, this one is actually very comfortable, uh, but I just think there's better. So that's why I'm not using silicon band. But still, uh, it breathes well. It never smells bad. Uh, the build quality is awesome. Uh, you can change it very easily. So if I uh, take that one, uh, by the way, um, this one, uh, the Tactics, is the only one that may also come with a second band. So all of the watches, all of the Phoenix watches series come with that silicon band. I have to make a little correction. I've just realized I made a mistake. This band is the one that come with the Tactics. The Phoenix and the Apex come with that band instead. But well, it's about the same thing. I can say exactly the same thing about it. It just look a little bit different. But uh, if from the Tactics Pro, and the ballistic it also comes so you got the, the nylon one you, you got the silicon one but you have this nylon band in bonus and actually i love that band uh seriously it's very very comfortable it breath very well uh very 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 well done and it's very easy to change you just come here at the back and it's very easy to remove uh if you want to remove it you won't you won't uh, remove it accidentally and when you want to put back uh, the other one, it's just right here. You see, you just pull onto that lever here and you just put it in and that's it. So it's so easy to replace just like that. And that's that's the one you have uh, with the tactics when you go with the pro or the ballistic. Uh, so it's very easy to replace. So don't stop uh, your choice on on the on the band. Uh, actually, this band can be sold separately. So if you want a Phoenix with that band, you can do it. Um, uh, except on that one because uh, this one is larger than this one, so it, they don't do that one to fit on the Apex. Uh, but it's very very easy to replace. Uh, I love I love the fact that it is easily changeable. Uh, that's the uh, how do they call it? Uh, that's the ultra fit so it's a little it's a nylon band that can uh, stretch a little bit and then it's velcro i think it's loved by the running community because it's very very lightweight lightweight and just fit very well perfectly but uh, it's not my favorite one uh you can go uh of course with that one in leather that looks lovely in my opinion and is very very comfortable maybe not the one i would put to uh, go running but uh, perfect for uh, a dinner or if you go out and want to look good uh, i love that band very cool and actually 
uh, still my favorite one uh, that I use most of the time. Maybe not the best for uh, running or do sport activity, but it's that one. Uh, it look insanely good <laughs> and is very comfortable. And what I love about that one is that the watch is heavy and the band, this band is heavy too. So it feel more balanced and so easy to put on and put off. I love that one. It's my actual favorite. And yes, I can do cycling with it. Not the best, uh, probably that for sport activity. Uh, my favorite is that nylon band. But for the rest of the day, I love that one. Very, very love that one. Okay, so let's zoom back in. The next point is about uh, the GPS precision. And I have nothing negative to say about this. Uh, in fact, I think they even improved it since the last uh, model. Uh, it get your position so, so quickly. Uh, well, let's see. Actually, I'm inside. I will do most of the videos uh, with that one just because the screen looks better but if i start an activity and i'm actually inside so yes there's a roof just over me uh it might took more time but uh, actually when you are outside well you see it was very very quick uh but when you are outside it's even quicker uh sometime i do have my position into hmm, one one to five seconds actually probably did take 10 uh it's always very, very quick. And uh, the precision is very, very good. Uh, I'm almost the time on the right side of the road when I'm into the forest. Um, it, it's just accurate all the time. All the time. It's very, very accurate. So nothing negative to say about the, uh, the GPS uh, accuracy. Now, if we talk about the hearth rate accuracy, that is also, well very very good and actually it's hard to see on that one but anyway it's it's the same it's they all have the same hearth rate sensor and it is also very very good uh very very accurate i feel uh that the information that i have is accurate all the time uh you might see you will probably see at some point in the video uh when i do deposit it on on this mat sometime it does uh, see a hearth beat, which is weird. But anyway, is it is it bad? Probably not. Usually you wear it on your <laughs> on your wrist. Most of the time it's fine, but I don't know why here it does. I, I did have a lot of comment about that on the previous video. You see, <laughs> there is actually uh, my hearth rate. But anyway, anyway, uh, when you put it on your wrist, uh, it does an accurate job. The only thing I could say is that when I do start an activity and, then, and I do start it uh, really hard, uh, I feel that there is a kind of delay. But I think it's because of the fact that it feels like if Garmin broadcasts an average of the last minute or the last few minutes instead of the actual earth rate. So that would be the reason of the delay. But that's only my guess. Okay, now let's talk about the flashlight. And <laughs> uh, on the Epix, you got this flashlight. So yes, it does some white lines and the screen produce light. And well, it, it's kind of impressive of what it can produce as light. It's kind of impressive. It will help you for sure if you are lost in the wood at night and you don't see the trail or you don't see anything, you will see a bit around you. So that might be very, very handy. But it is nothing to compare with the flashlight we have on those two big guys. And the flashlight, you only have it on the Tactics and the Phoenix X. And the flashlight is just right here. You can see that. You just double press the light button and you got a flashlight, a real flashlight, and it's kind of strong. It kind of look like the one you probably have on your phone. So same thing here, double press. Oh, actually, you see, that's a red light. Uh, that's the one I used uh, last time. So if I come 
into that menu here. So I press and hold the light button to come into uh, those options and I navigate to the flashlight, select it. And here I've got a red flashlight and I can also choose how strong I want to have my light. Uh, so the Phoenix does have a white and a red light. And if we go here on the tactics, you can have a green light, different color. So, so it's not an option. This one is green, this one is red, and that's the way it is. Uh, but for the white light, it's the very, very same thing. And it does produce a lot of light. Um, at first, I tell myself, well, that's a great gadget. I will probably use it uh, sometime. And actually, I use it every single day, multiple times. Uh, when I do uh, walk, uh, I do a lot of night activity. So when I'm outside, sometimes I do use it. When I do walk uh, inside my home uh, at night, uh, instead of turning on a light, I just use my flashlight because I have it on my wrist. And the only thing I have to turn it on is click, click. It's, it's just wonderful. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you wake up at night to uh, serve you a glass of water, well, that's perfect. Uh, if you go into under your uh, under your office, uh, you want to grab something into a dark place. Well, click, click. You've got your light. Uh, it's very, very handy. The last time I did use it is uh, yesterday. Uh, I did a ride. Uh, at night and I forget to bring my tail light so when I did come back uh, the sun was set there was a lot of car so what I did is that I come here into flashlight and you can go into the menu and you can activate a strobe so there we have we got a strobe you can have a strobe looking like this that's the one I did use so it was green looks different and I was not noticeable. So because it is uh, on your wrist, just like that, usually you point your wrist uh, on bicycle down. So it was creating a big green light uh, on the ground. And if you're running or walking, uh, it will point behind you. So it will, uh, you'll be able to, uh, to, to make yourself visible to the incoming cars. So yes, it's a very, very good feature that uh, I miss instantly when I do try another watch. So can be that one, even if the screen is beautiful, we'll come back to that later. Or if I just test any other watch, I always miss the uh, flashlight feature because I use it really often. The next point is about how independent the watch is from your phone, your computer, or any other things. And it is very independent. Uh, I did realize uh, a little bit earlier that, as you can see, my watch, this one is actually still in French. So if I want to modify that settings, well, I don't need a phone, I don't need a computer. I can do that straight into the watch. So I just press and hold that button just right here. That brings me to the menu. Press one time up, going to system. And then I've got the language just right here and I put it back into English. And it's very, everything is quick to do. You got access to a big menu. Uh, see, watch face, clock, history. Uh, you have access to so, so many, many things. Menu, sub menu, sub, sub menus, and sub, 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 sub menus. You have a lot of options. Everything can be modified straight into the watch. You is it never or almost never need your phone? 99, at least 99% of the stuff you can do it straight on the watch. No need of phone, no need of computer. If you want to start an activity, let's say a run, that's the pre-built page. But if you want to modify the info you got into this, you can go into run settings, data screens, and modify it. You can change the layout if you want to have uh, more stuff. We'll come back to that later. Uh, you can change the data fields you got inside. That's the uh, earth rate right now, but I can also have my pace or uh, average pace, lab, whatever. You, you have a lot of fields. You can modify everything straight into 
the watch so the watch is very very independent which bring us to the next point which is how the watch is resistant to disuse and because of that previous point it is very resistant to disuse well first first because of the build quality i don't worry that that this is something that will uh break into uh, a year or two i think it's built to last of course i'm not a garmin user since many 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 years i would say about two years uh but they feel they feel a, a very great build quality so i don't think this will be a problem but the huge advantage of garmin watches is how independent they are because uh, if you look at the competition you always need the phone application or a computer application to modify something into your watch you also need that to uh, synchronize your watch but not here uh, because everything can be modified inside the watch so if garmin go bankrupt and their application is no longer available well <laughs> still you'll be able to to uh modify your stuff on the watch and uh, the other thing is about synchronization it's the only watch brand that i know that you can connect if, if if garmin go bankrupt and you still want to export your activity to strava for example you can use the usb connection at the back connect it to your computer and go extract the uh, <laughs> the file from the watch to your computer and then manually send it to strava of course it's not the best option but still, if Garmin go bankrupt, you don't end up with an empty shell. The next point is, can you reverse the watch? And it's a point that I uh, take a note because of uh, Kuros. Because Kuros, you can take the watch, put it on the other side, just like that. And reverse the screen, and it's keep going on on the side you want. And they don't do that at Garmin. Um, that would be great if they do it because the thing is you see when you put the watch on your wrist on your left wrist like most people uh you can control the watch just like that so you use your thumb to go up and down you can select with the index and you can go back with your uh big finger i don't know how you call it in english but uh you see it goes very very well to control it however if you're left-handed you will probably <laughs> put your watch on your right hand and well whoops not used to put it on that one that's another story now you have to use your index to go up and down and thumbs it's not this bad but it's not intended to work this way so that would have been great if they let us the option to reverse the watch so a left handed can use uh, the watch still with its thumb and select they would just need to make the screen reversible but uh, it doesn't work so that would have been a great feature to have now let's talk about the quantity of sport available inside the watch and that's a lot <laughs> so if we come just right here into the sport menu uh we can see the one that i have actually set into my watch uh so trail running run hike bike walk strength and then i find into the least favorite so i've got navigate expedition all those things and i want to come to the add button and we have so multi-sport that is configurable and ultra run treadmill virtual run track run indoor climb bike indoor mountain bike e-bike e-mountain bike cycle cross gravel bike bike commute <laughs> bike tour bike road bike pool swim open water triathlon swim run adventure race and i will pass them very quickly because there's a lot but still you can see all of them but uh, you do have a lot of options and finally you got other uh, if you want to do other things probably maybe there is a sport that you do that is not available inside the watch but still you do have a lot of sport available so another great thing another thing that i love a lot is the multi-sport mode 
Very, very well done. So, uh, as you saw, right... Mm, not there. Right there, you got the multi-sport mode. So you can go inside here. It's a uh, triathlon, duathlon, brick, uh, custom. You can uh, select the sport that you will want to do or... Uh, Whatever, uh, you can select in order uh, that, that was naming the multi-sport mode, and you can select the sport you want to have in which order. But I don't use that one, but be because there is something that is so well built, and for this you have to come just one time into the menu. So you press and hold that one. You go down into system, and you go down to hotkeys, and you set up. And actually, I set that up on. Uh, down plus start so you see it does change sport uh, those shortcuts when you go inside here you can select a combination of buttons and select what you want to do with that combination of buttons so very very well done you have a lot of options just right here so what I did with those two button is to change sport so it's not built like that by default but that's the way I set it up so if I go here and I do start a run and I do start the activity, so actually I'm doing my run and at some point, whoa, there's a bicycle just right there. I want to jump onto it and do some bicycle. So what I will do is press and hold those two button that will bring me up that page to choose the next port that I want to do. And I have the choice of all, all of my activities. And I said I want to do uh, a bike. Uh, that was live track. We'll come back on this later. Um, so if I want to do bike, so I select it just like that. And I've done my 32 seconds of running. And now I did switch to bike. So actually my bike activity is started. And well, I can keep doing my bike activity. And at some point I can, again, press those two buttons and go in hike mode. So let's do hike and I've done 17 seconds of bicycle and now I'm hiking. I didn't change my sport. I will see it into my multi-sport activity at the end. And now I have the information that I want to see when I do hiking. Very, very well done. Again, when you're done, you press the start stop button and you can save it as a multi-sport mode uh, activity. Uh, but actually, as I didn't do anything, I will just go down and say discard. We want to discard yes and that activity is now discard so it's very hard to ask for a better multi-sport mode now let's talk about the watch interface and again i will continue with that one just because well, as you can see uh it just looked better <laughs> it just looked better so uh <clears throat> it's the same thing huh? uh you see it's the very same watch face we do have about the same watch face in those three watches uh, the only difference you might see uh if you go with the smaller model i guess uh probably that the regular model so the one that is the same size uh on this on this phoenix phoenix here uh may have less information but i i'm pretty sure that the s model does have less information because actually i've got a lot of information on the same page you got just right here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine information on the main screen. You can also have less information if you'd like. Uh, so I press and that's the way it works. Everywhere you are in, inside the watch, if you want to modify something, you press and hold the menu button, which bring you the option of, well, actually I'm on watch face. So I do see watch face. So I hit watch face and I can select a different watch face if you want to to be analog or numerical uh, you, you can choose between all of those and as you can see some of them does have less <clears throat> information uh, and once you're in there you can also uh, if I press here I can uh, lay out data so if I want to change the data which you see I can change uh, the date right here or I can go uh, well, actually, I'm changing the date. If I go to the next one, let's say that one, you see I got my altitude, barometric uh, pressure, earth rate, uh, battery time, actual temperature. You have a lot of options. Let's go back. I want to show you what I did with mine. I did choose to have on my main screen. Um, so actual 
sunset time so at 2015 tonight the sun will set uh the actual altitude is 91 meters we are tuesday 17 right there it's 1502 i have done since this morning uh 1063 step uh not with that watch uh, that's funny so i did it with that watch and you see well that one is a bit higher just because that watch didn't sync with the app since the last few uh, minutes or hours uh, but they sync together um, through the app. Uh, you've got your battery, uh, not battery level, but battery time remaining. Uh, if I press the down button here, I can see both. So I've got time and battery percentage. Uh, right there, I have the highs and lows of the day. So a maximum of 13 degrees and lows of 4. That's in Celsius. And that's 14 is the actual temperature. And if you look just overhead, you see that little hearth rate. Uh, it's because I didn't wear the watch for the last few hours, but that one you might see you See that line actually I'm not wearing it But that line is my earth rate when I was wearing it So you are able to have a four-hour graph of your earth rate four or six hours. Not sure uh, So you have a graph on the, on the main on the main page with your earth rate, but that's what you choose to have uh, So very very well done. You also have a lot of uh, other things uh, you got widget and just to show you that it's the same thing uh, you see we've got widget it just look brighter and the color are more beautiful onto the uh, epix so, but it, it's it's the very very same thing on all of those watches just just to show you because I will continue on that one because it just looked better on the camera uh, so what do we have as a uh, 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 widget widget so uh, the first one is the one uh, is a one that I love a lot and it's the weather uh, <laughs> I love it because in winter when I want to go outside at night I don't know what I will wear because the temperature do vary a lot so the only thing I have to do is just to look right here and I know that it's 14 degrees outside so I know what I will wear uh, but if I go down here and select that uh, that widget well I know that it's 14 outside that it feels like 14 and there there is actually 60 persons of rain I've got my eyes and lows of the day I know there's a, a wind of 23 kilometers per hour from west that is coming from west and uh, it just have been updated at 1458 uh, I can have the uh, forecast for the next hours just right here with all of those information and I can go up to 12 or 11 hours uh, and then, and then the next hours I can have my forecast for the next few days and uh, 12 hour trends for the temperature and uh, uh, rain and air quality just right here so beautiful beautiful widget. Uh, we've got that one also that is made to see uh, the sunset and sunrise time. So I know that today the sun rise at 519 and uh, set at 2015. We are actually here on that graph and there is five hours and nine minutes left of sun for today. Even if it's cloudy. <clears throat> Uh, if we go inside, we got this on the beautiful graph. We also have the twilight time for the sunrise and sunset. And if I press the up and down men button, I can see it for tomorrow, next week or any day of the week. I can have the information. And again, like I told you earlier, if you press and hold the menu button anywhere you, ha you, you are, you will have more options. So if I press that one, I can select the location that I want so I can search for a city. I can uh, use a save location. I can use the map to navigate where I want and select where I want to see uh, the sunset and sunrise time of the day. Another lovely widget is the ABC for altimeter, barometer and compass, uh, which give you your actual altitude, the direction you are looking at and the atmospheric pressure that is actually uh, stable. You can have a graph of your uh, previous hours. <clears throat> Very very well done again you have your view to max just right here uh, you've got your view to max for cycling and all those things 
uh, your training status, your last activity, number of step of the day. That's a goal. I didn't, I never touch it, but the goal does vary every day. If you do more activity, it will ask you more every time. So you might end up eventually to have 20,000 uh, step to do in your day. Uh, you've got your earth right? Actually, there's nothing because I'm not wearing it. Uh, that's your body battery. Uh, actually, not uh, showing it because I'm not wearing the watch. Uh, you've got your sleep score, uh, number of time you sleep into the last night. Uh, you've got your uh, deep sleep, RAM, uh, lightweight, like or awake. You can see that all, how much time you have passed in all of those uh, part. Uh, if you go on the app, you can also see your sleep score for uh, the weeks, uh, the month, the year. You can always track that information. Uh, you've got an oximeter. So th this one will show you your blood oxygen. You've got your calendar, notification, uh, music control. Oh, music control. That's such a great feature. Uh, one of the widget that I love the most. Of course, you can have access it through widget, but actually you don't really need it over here because anywhere you are inside the watch, you can be into an activity or not. You can press and hold the down button just right here. And you have access to actually there is no music on my phone, so uh, I'm not seeing anything. But usually you would see the title of the track and the artist and those things. So let's say, for example, that I'm on my bike and I stop at a red light. My play, my music is playing on my phone on speaker and I don't want to disturb all uh, of the people around uh, instead of taking my phone uh, and put it on pause with all my sweat fingers. Um, what I will do is just press that button right here and press pause just right there. Actually, it's play because there is nothing playing <clears throat> and it's not playing because I didn't select any music on my phone, but that's the way it works. So I, well, actually it did start music. <laughs> so, okay, pause. So yeah, that's, that's what I would do. Uh, you can also skip to the next song. Pause, thank you. And uh, you can also, if you would like, it's not something, oops, sorry, it's not something that I suggest, but you can also put music straight into the watch. Uh, you can put MP3s or you can sh uh, you can sync it with your uh, Spotify, Deezer, Amazon Music and few other less known services. So if I come into the menu here, oh, well, actually, yes, I can skip. I can also, uh, as, you, as you have seen, you can control the volume of your phone. Very well done. Again, uh, if you press and hold that button here, you can choose your music provider. So uh, you've got, actually I, I had my, my music. I did put some, two songs into it just to test it and it works very well. Um, but you can also have access to Spotify and those things. So you can download music into your watch to listen to it over your Bluetooth headphone. But the reason why I'm not recommending it, it's because it will drain the battery like crazy. We will see that a bit later. But what a wonderful feature to control the music of your phone from the watch. Okay, now let's talk about <laughs> the battery life. That's the point we are. Uh, I'll put that note. Sorry, it's in French. But it's fairly easy to understand. Uh, so we have the same score for the Phoenix and the Tactics. So that part of the review is different. Uh, so what do we have? Uh, that is estimation from uh, Garmin and they are pretty accurate. So if you use those watch into um, into smartwatch mode, uh, so no GPS. Uh, this means you will track your sleep, track your earth rate, your steps, uh, time, altitude, and those things. Uh, you will have 27 days of battery if you use the tactile uh, screen. We will come back to the tactile screen later. Or 28 if you disable the tactile. Uh, into GPS mode, it's 66 hours of battery that you have on all of those two watches. And if you use a flashlight uh, in the strongest mode, you have five hours of battery. So yes, the, flash, uh, the flashlight does drain the battery a lot. So five hours um, to seven 
days into the less slew and light mode. And if you use uh, the color, so uh, re uh, green or red, it's 24 hours uh, of battery that you have. If you use the GPS plus the music, it's 17 hours of music uh, of, of battery that you will have. And if you use everything, so this means GPS, music, plus the flashlight at maximum brightness, you will have four hours. That's the same thing for those two watch. What it gives in real life is just right here. So in real life, you've got 70, I, I did. Uh, that's a test I had with the uh, uh, Garmin Tactics. It was similar with the Phoenix. Uh, so I did 17 days with the same charge. And no, I didn't go outside at day very much. So the solar panel is not that much involved into that time. So 17 days uh, in which I did 26 hours and 14 minutes of activities, of which 24 hours and 58 minutes was from the GPS and one hours and 16 minutes was from hearth rate share uh, because I was using, uh, I, I was uh, doing um, stationary bike uh, swifting. <laughs> uh, and over that, over that, there is about 30 minutes of flashlight. So that's insane, insane. Now, if we pass to the uh, Garmin Apex, uh, there's two different mode. Uh, there's the, the always on display and the movement display. So there's a mode where your display will remain always on. Uh, it's up to you to know if you want to use it. It might be uh, Andy if you're working at your desk and it's, the watch is just sitting right there. And sometimes you just take a look at your wrist to see the time and you don't want to move your wrist. So that might end. Otherwise, if you go into movement mode, you will need to, uh, you see, do that movement to wake it up. Uh, so if you keep it in always on display, you're going to have about six days of battery in smartwatch mode. And if you put it into movement mode, you will have 16 days of battery. With a full battery, you've got 24 hours of GPS or 12 hours of music or 9 hours of GPS plus music. And what it done in real life is that when I did set it on always on, I really did have 6 days of battery even if I used the GPS for 10 hours and 4 minutes. So, well, I was worried that I, I would not like that watch because of its screen because it does drain a lot more of battery, but still and always on display six days with 10 hours of GPS. That's mind blowing. Uh, with the movement mode, I did get 12 days and a half of charge using 17 hours and 45 minutes of GPS plus three hours and 45 minutes of Zwift where I was sharing my hearth rate to uh, uh, the Zwift app. So still very, very good charge. It's not a watch that you will recharge every day for sure. Uh, very, very well done. Even if you do a lot of activity, you don't really have to worry about uh, the battery life. Of course, it's way behind uh, the Phoenix and the Tactics. Uh, but still, uh, there's not much watch that does uh, this, uh, this kind of charge with a single battery. The next point is about the temperature recommendation from Garmin. So you can use uh, that watch between minus 20. All of those three watches, the same uh, weather recommendation. So it's between minus 20 and plus 45 Celsius. And if you are into Fahrenheit, it's from minus 4 to 113. Same thing for both three of them. Okay, the next point is a point in which we will talk about difference. And it's about the screen, brightness, and lisibility. Okay, <laughs> so uh, those two watch does have the very same screen. It's a MIP screen, so memory in pixel. And this one is an AMOLED screen. And that's why it is so much different. So the way it works is that when you have 
a MIP screen, the watch need to drain a bit of energy to change the pixel status. And once that job is done, it doesn't need more battery to broadcast something. It's just fixed like that and it doesn't consume nothing. It's, it's just like that. Okay. <laughs> uh, then you've got the AMOLED screen. Oh, and, and because this doesn't produce light, if you want to see something into the dark, you need a backlight just like this to produce light to so, so you're able to see what's on the screen because no light, you, you don't see nothing. An AMOLED screen doesn't have backlight. In fact, every pixel produces its own light. So every time you have a pixel enable, well, it does drain a bit of battery. And that's why you can see actually, if I turn it on, so actually it may, it's made to be beautiful to watch because well, I just press something so it makes itself the most beautiful so we can see it. But if when it falls into sleep mode, you will see the, the, the 15 just right here. The time will get itself empty just like that because actually it is draining battery to produce that uh, screen. Because if you see something, the battery is actually draining. So it turns some pixel off to remain on uh, for a bigger period of time. So it's very, very well think. Uh, another thing I would have thought it could be uh, negative on that watch, it's because it's produced light to broadcast an image. How will it be to sleep with it? Well, in fact, when you go sleep with it, uh, you can schedule your night mode. Uh, where is my night mode? Mm, sleep mode right here sleep mode that's what you will see at night so less information jo so just time and uh what is it date oh and my uh alarm and in it into sleep mode uh the screen will not turn on when <laughs> you do move the watch as you can see uh, what you can do to turn it on is either press a button or just tap on the screen. So if you tap on the screen, you got your time and it will turn off. And it's very, very dim, so it, it won't woke up, woke up your uh, partner in bed. Um, so it's just for yourself. It, it's not too bright. It's very, very well done. Uh, and I can disable it just right here and uh, it can go on on schedule so if you said between this time and this time go go into sleep mode that's what it will done so it's very very well thought speaking about sleep mode all of those three watch is very very well think uh, so you can sleep with the watch and I think it's very important because all of those smart watches today uh, can track your sleep so you have to wear it when you sleep and most of the watches i tested uh was not well thought to not wake you up while you're wearing it so you can have notification you can move your wrist and it produce a light and your wrist is just beside your eyes so you wake up because there's a light that turned on in front of your eyes it's not really well thought but in in the, the case of those three watches they are really really well thought to not wake you up uh and if there's something that wake you up you will be able to modify that option so it won't happen again uh very very well done now let's talk about notification and reply uh on all of those three watch if someone send you a message so it can be a text message something over messenger uh, you can have notification of about any uh, application, any any notific notification you have on your phone, you can have it uh, just right here. Over that, when you receive that notification, you will be able to read it. And if you press the start stop button into that notification, you will have the ability to reply. You will not be able to pop up uh, a keyboard and type reply, but you will be able to uh, send a pre uh, pre-built reply that's it otherwise you have to take your phone 
Uh, if you, for example, have a headset and want to uh, answer a call or decline it, you can also do that from the watch. Very well done. But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I know there are some watches that can do a lot more. Those three watch are watch built for sport activity. Not, uh, it's a smart watch, but it's not a s super smart watch. So, yes, you have connection with your phone, but it, it is it is limited to that. They are sport GPS watches. The next point is about watch control, and again, yeah, it's the same thing. So I will keep going on with this one because it's more beautiful. Uh, I love the way it's built. Uh, I love the fact that it ha it have five buttons. Uh, because when you have it on your wrist, you can control it with your thumbs to go up and down. It's very easy to navigate. When you want to input into something, you press the start button and you can go back here with the back button. So with those three fingers, you can do up, down, uh, or three, two, two fingers or whatever you want. Uh, it's very, very easy to control. I love it. Um, I was worried about the touchscreen because I hate touch screen i really hate them uh, but actually it goes so well on that watch most of the watch i did test it was a nightmare uh, the touch screen never goes well but here it's just perfect you see it's scrolling just perfectly i can go into that well actually there's nothing there but i can go into that and go into swipe uh, I surprised myself at the beginning to use it and <laughs> I was kind of surprised because I normally ate touchscreen, but it goes so well. You see, I can just see, I, I just go fast and, it, and it's scrolling and I can stop it. It's just follow my finger so, so well. And it even gives you don't have to use it if you don't if you just want to use the buttons you can do it and i even create myself a shortcut usually you have to come into that menu and go here on touch to put it on and off but what i did is i create myself a shortcut if i really want to disable it press on all those two buttons and the touch screen is off uh, i did realize when i do take my shower with it that it detects that it is water dropping on it and most of the time uh, it disable the touch screen automatically. So you, if you are under the shower, you, it won't do crazy stuff on there. It will realize, well, there's a problem. That's actually water. So uh, I will stop my touch screen until the water is gone. Uh, very well done. Uh, so if I want to re-enable it, I will press those two buttons. And um, they even get some stuff uh, better with the touchscreen. The watch is think to be used without the touchscreen, but if you want to use it, you can have shortcut. Uh, for example, uh, actually it is 13 degrees outside. That is an information that is broadcast to me uh, thanks to that weather app. So if I want to see more information about the weather instead of going down and select it, what I can do is simply press and hold now 13 and this will bring me up to that, <laughs> that beautiful screen inside the weather uh, another example if i want to see my step graph of the day instead of going down 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 and select <laughs> it's the same principle i can simply press on all the step actually i didn't press it well mm, right there got it usually it works Come on, just because I'm on camera. Battery, uh, actually battery. Oh yeah, battery option, didn't thought to that. Altitude, right in, go back, steps. All right, you got it. Sunset, sunrise, got it. See, very, very well done. Actually, a very satisfied of the watch screen. I hate watch screen, but since I use that one, well, I don't, I, I want to have a touch screen on my watch if it is well made as it is on the Phoenix series. Now, let's talk about trust. Do I trust those watches? And in fact, it's the watch that I trust the most. Uh, they never failed me. 
Uh, in fact, well, if we took my good old tactics delta, it did fail me on during an activity because I was abusing it. Uh, I was uh, creating some GPS itinerary. We'll see that a bit later. Uh, long itinerary did change my mind a lot of time in very few minutes and it did crash. So I was worried I had lost my uh, activity, but when it restart, it offered me to uh, restart my activity. So there's a fail safe. Uh, very, very satisfied with that. Um, those two watch did crash few times in the last weeks after an update. I think it will be solved with the last one that have just been installed. Probably because it was very fine at the beginning. I'm pretty sure it's an update things. Um, Otherwise, it just go very, very well. Uh, they did crash outside an activity. I think it was just after saving an activity or before starting it. Kind of weird. Uh, but still, they never failed me into an activity. That's, they are the watch that I use the most because they are the one that I like the most. When I'm not testing a watch, I'm using those watch. And actually, <laughs> because of the flashlight, uh, when... I'm testing another watch. I always keep one of those two on my wrist just to have the flashlight because it's just so helpful. Uh, anyway, uh, about crashing, uh, well, I, I think I could just not have spoke about it because they're not crashing devices, but they did. They did, but still my confidence in it is very, very high. Uh, just because, you know, when you're using it, uh, actually, it's disabled, but whatever. Uh, touch screen on. Y you see, it, it just goes so well. You don't feel any lag. Uh, the watch doesn't seem to be uh, about to crash. Everything is fluid. Just be because of that, uh, I can trust that the device is not overloaded. Uh, everything goes well, never crash, almost never crashed. <laughs> and yeah, for this, I have a lot of... A, a lot of trust into the device and that's something important because I don't want to lose my activity or if I'm lost inside the wood I don't want my navigation device to crash and lost my uh, previous hours uh, itinerary so I can come back on my feet so that's kind of very important uh, and well they are the device that I trust the most and about trust into precision, like I told you a, a bit earlier, GPS, GPS and earth rate uh, data seems very accurate to me. So I do trust those devices a lot. The next point is about water rating, a water resistance rating. Uh, is it says like, well, it's, it's kind of hard to see here, but it says when <laughs> it's under a band, it says 100 meter here. It will be easier to see it on that one. It is right there, 100 meters. Uh, so it's a 10 ADM grade for all of those three watch, which mean, well, you can dive uh, up to 100 meter deep. Uh, you can, you, you don't have to care about washing your hand, taking your shower, jumping into the water, swimming, and even jet ski if you would like. There is no problem. You will not have water inside your watch into any of those activity unless you go under 100 meter deep. So just don't do that and you will be fine about water. Even a hot shower, you're totally fine. Okay, now let's talk about one of my favorite things. The mapping. The mapping is unbelievable. <laughs> uh, so let's say that we go, let's go into map, uh, simply. You can find the map inside every activity, uh, but just let's go into apps. So already find me on the GPS. So there's where I am. Um, actually, if I press here, you see I can move it. Otherwise, you may need to press and hold the left button. But actually, that's because I'm on map. Uh, but if you press the left button, you will have access to pan and zoom. And from there, you will be able to zoom. You can also use the button. You see plus and less. You can select here. It's very, very well done. But you can navigate anywhere inside the world if you have loaded the map. Uh, it will come with the map of your continent. So actually, as you can see, I'm in North America. 
and well right here i can zoom select somewhere i want to go and let's say for example that i want to go there let's say in montreal i select it and i can zoom precisely to the street corner where i want to go and select go uh, by bike so it will find me a bike itinerary it's not that close montreal from here it's about 90 kilometers uh, so it will create me an itinerary and right there i will be able to uh, navigate uh, with it it will tell me when to turn right when to turn left and when to keep going on it's still calculating because it's not that close but it does a very great job uh, of doing this i uh, will not wait on that one i will do a tutorial video in which we you will be able to see a bit more but another great option we have is let's say for example i'm running somewhere i don't know and i want to do a 10k what i will do is a round trip course and select the distance that i want to make so let's say 10k select it and it will uh, you can select the direction you want to go so if for example you want to go uh east because you know there's uh i don't know uh, the beach or uh, the shore whatever you want to go run over there you can go east or just let's say uh, right here in any direction it will create you three itinerary in which you will have the option to uh choose uh, which one you want to do uh they do it quite quickly actually actually i would say it taking a little bit longer than usual i don't know why right there i have my first itinerary 11.6 kilometers uh with uh it says 31 uh, meters of climb i've got another option right here 9.3 kilometers with 51 meters of climb and that last one at 10.6 so if i want to do that one i can do go and uh i will be able to follow that one <laughs> uh pan and zoom like i told you and i can like that follow that itinerary very very well done i love the mapping uh it will so yes you can navigate uh you can select where you want to go on the map also oh uh let's come back here on the map um so if i come here and say say around me we'll let it load i can select a direction in which i want to go and choose what i want to have actually it's a bit different when i'm into mapping when i'm into let's say uh, walk mode walk mode if i go down to map press and hold here go on oh it's not around me i was wrong it's uh oh, let's restart that oops Save location, navigation, point of interest. And from here, I can search for a city, food, drinks, fuel service, lodging, attraction. Let's say that I'm looking for a uh, hospital. Huh, hospital. I need an hospital around me. So I will see that the nearest is Hôpital de Grimbe at 2.7 kilometers from here at uh, northeast and i can select it and go and it will create me an itinerary so i can go there that's a notification that come in <laughs> uh let's disable that one ah oh, i did go out of the activity but anyway uh the itinerary was uh created and i was able to uh follow the trail on the watch so mapping if you're looking for a great watch for mapping you won't find any better watch on the market. Oh, even better. <laughs> uh, because ma mapping is not new to Garmin watches, but there's something that is new. And is that if you come into the map manager, you can update and download more maps of other continents for free. So uh, actually I'm in North America and let's say I go in Japan, Australia, uh, Africa, Europe. I can download the continent uh, just from here. So I would need to go uh, into here, Topo Active Maps, 
go on add map and actually it will connect to the Wi-Fi and I will be able to select the map that I want to download actually I'm not sure if I was connected on my Wi-Fi here but if I'm not I could simply go there and go down to connectivity Wi-Fi and then select it and then there's that guy that is still sending me messages and <laughs> and yeah so I, I'm able to uh, sync, wi uh, sync to Wi-Fi or my network so I would be able to select another network and connect to it straight from the watch straight from the watch you can do all of that uh, the next point I can't believe I put it on my list but it's about starring there is something very great you can do if you don't want to use the watch for an extended period of time is to turn off the watch so if I come just right here I can say power off and power off yes and just leave it there and the battery will not get empty over time <laughs> I have to say it because it's an option that is not available at Sunto and some other watches so yeah, it's available on two Garmin watches. After that, you just have to press and hold the uh, top left button and wait for the watch to restart. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> now, let's talk about the um, screen size over the watch size. Um, hmm. I think it's great for most Phoenix watches, but they could be better on some model we have to look over history to uh, understand what happened uh, if you look the old model that's the tactics delta you see that little ring all around was the uh, solar panel on uh, the newer model uh, let's say let's take the tactics you see that the ring is way bigger so what they did what they did is that they uh, keep the same uh, screen size and they cut into the bezel to bring that uh, bigger uh, sun panel uh, and because of that uh, what happened you can see it on the apex which is kind of stupid because uh, <laughs> because there is uh, no apex with uh, a solar panel but you can see that there's that huge bezel all around. I mean, it's not that huge. Uh, there's there's a lot worse into the market. Uh, but Th Garmin was doing better uh, before. So they could have put a bigger screen here instead of having that uh, chuck all around. But seriously, <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. It's just because Garmin did better. Uh, by the past and the reason is this is just they built all of their watch to get that solar panel even if they're not so it's, it's just because they have the same bezel of uh, the Phoenix 6 series on the apex so yeah that's that's what it's create but well anyway it's not this bad uh, still we have a big percentage of the watch space that is used by the screen so so just keep in mind that if you buy a Garmin Phoenix with no solar panel you have this lost space that is used for nothing so you better take it now let's talk about weight and comfort um well weight <laughs> it's not light uh, the watch has been made to be durable, not light. So, yes, they are heavy, especially if you take that one with, uh, with that metal uh, titanium band. Uh, very, very heavy. Uh, if we go over the letter, it's less heavy. But still, it's not light watch. If you take the silicon one, well, that one is kind of kind of light but the watch itself is not light uh, it will create a big difference between those two watch uh, this one with the nylon bend uh, the ultra fit one is very light compared to that one with the um uh, with <laughs> the uh 
titanium band. Uh, but anyway, uh, they are comfortable to me. I like to have heavy watch. That's a personal thing. Uh, if you don't have, if you don't like to have uh, heavy things on your wrist, maybe it's not for you, or maybe you can go with the smaller model. The uh, if you go with the Phoenix S, Phoenix 7S, uh, that would be uh, probably great for you. But still, there is even lighter um, watches. So if you want something light, might not be for you. But ah, oh, they are so awesome. Um, another thing. Um, did I talk about the balance earlier? I think I yes, I did talk about the balance earlier. Uh, the fact that the, to have the the weight of the titanium band under uh, the watch make it more balanced. Now let's talk about language available inside the watch, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> so uh, if I come here inside the menu into system and language, as you can see, there's a lot of language. So, uh, uh, well, see if you can find your language just over here. Uh, that's all the language that are available inside the watch. A lot of language. A lot of them. <laughs> all right. Next point is about the quantity of information you can have on the same activity page. And that's a lot. Uh, uh, so but it may vary from a watch to another, but for all of those three, because they are, uh, this is the X model, because this is the tactics, and this is because the, this is the Apex, may, even if it's not the same uh, size, they can all have up to eight information on the same page. So if I take that one, for example, as you can see, uh, I will need to start that activity. But as you can see, in a few seconds, well, on top, I have my earth rate, elevation, time of the day, distance, average speed, total essence, total, total calories, and time of the day. Uh, no, that's the oh, sunset time. <laughs> uh, so yes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight information, and that's a life track. We'll come back to that later. But still, eight. Oh, that's a lap. Let's stop that and discard it. Uh, eight information on the same screen is a lot. Uh, I'm not sure if you have. Uh, maybe if someone have it, uh, you can tell me in the comment. If you have the Phoenix 6 regular model, do you have 8 information or less? And I'm pretty sure if you have the S model, because the screen is way smaller, uh, you will have uh, up to 6 information, I would say. Um, but that's only a guess. But uh, yes, you can. Uh, not point of interest. Uh, walk setting, data screen. You can choose how much layout information you have you want big information uh two three four different type of display it's up to you to choose what you want to have you can change the data inside you can add uh that's the map but you can also have a ghost uh if you want to run uh against one of your previous activity average speed uh you can do it uh here you can add custom data, HR gauge, virtual partner. So if you want to, I don't know, run um, 10K at an average of uh, five, uh, you can set your virtual par partner to run at uh, a pace of five kilometers per uh, five uh, minutes per kilometer and uh, see where you are against it. Uh, you got your compass, elevation, uh, music control, clock, uh, it's up to you. You choose what you want to have. Uh, you can have a lot of things on the same page. And that's something that I love uh, because when you are into an activity, you don't necessarily want to press a button to uh, see uh, the information you want. I have to have, I like to have my eight information on the same screen. And another very good thing, uh, let's say on bicycle, I didn't set it up on that watch. But uh, if I come into the menu just right here, there's an option that is called, well, I will need to go into bike settings and there is 
uh, that auto climb you see actually it's off but you can set yourself a page to get information when you want to go at full speed you're on the flat and when you and when you go inside uh, so I set it to when not navigating always or off so let's say when not navigating uh, so this means it will not be able it, it will not be enabled if you are on navigation mode so onto the map but if you are into your run screen you're gonna have this current screen and you can set yourself a climb screen so uh, you choose you create a screen actually there's no screen to create for that but I would just have to create another screen and uh, it would switch to that screen when I'm climbing you can invert color if you want at a vertical speed of 600 meter per power but I can change that to uh, something less or something more uh, that's really up to you and switch mode if you want it to sw switch fast or slow again that's up to you very very great option that I love so just like that when I'm driving at full speed I want to have less information I want to have my hearth rate speed and distance that's the most important and when I'm hiking uh, I want to have uh, my vertical speed I want to have uh, the hill grade I want to have my total ascent and descent I want to have those kind of information so I will make it switch automatically to another page so I can see the information that I want without touching a single button now <laughs> And yes, again, it's the same thing on those three watches. That's why I'm create only one video. Uh, the next one is uh, the wake up, the alarm. So if we go into clock and alarm, as you can see, as you can see, actually there is one alarm that is enabled for tomorrow at 8:30. But I can modify it with the pen just right here, and I can set it to on or off. I can select the time that I want. I can repeat it or not. So if I set it to repeat daily, weekly, weekend, or custom, I can have it only on Wednesday and Tuesday, maybe or Wednesday and Saturday. It's really up to you. And one thing that I love is that you have the uh, ability to choose between tone and vibe, vibration and tone only. Vibration is great because if you are maybe in a dorm, you don't want to wake up everybody with your alarm. Well, you just set it to vibration and you are the only one that will notice about it because it will vibrate on your wrist. And let's disable that one. All right. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the tactics uh, because there are some things different on that one and the only difference except the look of those two watches is the fact that it's a watch that is built with military options. One of them is the um, right night vision. Night vision will disable backlight will disable uh, hearth rate, I guess. Yes, will disable hearth rate uh, and antennas and uh, uh, not antennas. No, ju just everything that produce uh, light. So that's the night mode and it's made. So if you look at with your naked eyes, you will be able to see something, but you will have to concentrate on it, but it will not produce light. The idea of it is that uh, it's it's made to be used with night vision, uh, Google. Um, so that's the option, but I never try it. I'm not a military. You also got stealth mode. Uh, this one will disable again. I think uh, no, it's not disabling the earth rate visibly, uh, but it will disable uh, all the antenna you have on the uh, the watch so you, you you'll be the most health possible uh it will disable some some of those things and when you are navigating uh you it, your your position will not be recorded on the map so well it won't be recorded on the map <laughs> that's it uh, so if you get caught by the enemy your position will not be inside the watch uh, so you can enable and disable it. And the other option you have 
is that when you press those two button, you got a kill switch. So if you get caught by the enemy, you just press those two button and it will erase everything inside your watch if you don't press any other button uh, before the end of that, that uh, countdown. Just press those two button and wait for 10 seconds. And that's it. Uh, another thing you will have is right here. Uh, fish, fish, I think it was available into the other one, but you got fly, fly, uh, yeah, that one. I'm not a pilot, but uh, here's the option you have inside uh, fly. I think you have airport and those kind of things, but I, I don't know how to use that. So uh, I will not talk about it, but that's an option that you have. The next point is how the watch will motivate you to move. Um, it kind of do a bit, uh, but not that much. Uh, so if we come here and go down maybe to uh, your step monitor, maybe it will motivate you to reach your goal of the day. But you will not have, will you? Actually, in the mode I am, there is nothing that remind me to complete my uh, my step of the day and those things. But maybe you can enable it. Tell me if I'm wrong. But I think, I think uh, there's no way to do it. Um, pretty sure there's no way to do it. Uh, and and that's something I love. Anyway, uh, I I don't want my watch to tell me every uh, hours. Hey, you should. Uh, do some steps. Uh, sitting all day is not good for your health. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, I move a lot. I don't need a watch to tell me to do that. However, I did test by the past a Polar watch, uh, the Polar Gritex Pro. And that one put me in inactivity stamp every time I was not moving for an hour. And that did successfully make me move because uh, there was that panation at the end. Uh, <laughs> so... Well, you don't have that on Garmin. Like it or not, that's the way it is. Now, let's talk about the altimeter. And it's very good because it's an altimeter power meter. So some watch will only uh, tell you your altitude based on the uh, GPS uh, triangulation. This one is a mix. Those For those three one, it's a mix of your actual uh, GPS position plus the atmospherical pressure. Of course, sometime you will need to recalibrate it. So if I come here, you see on the tactics, actually, uh, options not there. Let's go here, ABC. It is a bit off. Uh, those two one is good. It's just because I need to recalibrate it or maybe because I never calibrate it. Uh, you set it and usually it's very fine for a, a very long time. But when you see it's off just like that, uh, you press and hold the left button. You go into ABC option, altimeter, you calibrate it, you use DM, you go outside, you wait for one minute and it's done. It's as simple as that and... Oh, I got a call. I have to take it. And we are back. Sorry for that interruption. So yes, the altimeter barometer works very well. And uh, what I did find is that when I do uh, those big activities, so let's say I'm going out for a big hike or a big cycling tour, and I end back at the same starting point, uh, I always have the same uh, meet, uh, meters climb and down uh, or almost let's say that I will have a maximum of five meters in difference on maybe 300 or 500 meters so that's pretty good if you use some other watch that is very good and most of the time it's the very same number so very very good now let's talk about the price and I will not say any price I will let you go down in the description you will find links uh, which we which you will be able to use to uh, shop the product I, I don't tell price because it does change from a country to another it does change over time it, it, it does change all the time so I don't want to put price into my video and moreover if you use those links in the description uh, to buy the watch uh, I thank you in advance because uh, I do a commission out of it so 
thank you if you're buying through there. It helps me to buy some other watches to make some great video like the one you are watching right now. So, uh, speaking of the price, um, actually, if you take uh, Garmin Phoenix 7X Sapphire Sapphire Crystal screen and a solar panel, it's the same price as the Apex. And they are two very great choice. Uh, you will have some uh, difference, of course. Uh, this one will have a bigger battery, will have the flashlight, uh, we'll have a bigger screen and well, that's pretty much that's it the positive point of that one is the quality of the screen which is so beautiful beautiful <laughs> the beautifulness of the screen worth as much i would say as the screen size the battery life and the flashlight i think the they worth the same thing. It's really up to you. Do you prefer to have a, a more beautiful screen or a bigger flashlight and battery? It's really up to you. Uh, it's the same price. And on the other hand, you have those two watch. I think it's worth to compare those two and those two. Um, on the other hand, those two, um, you will pay a lot more money to get the tactics and you won't have much more. Uh, of course, you will have that uh, nylon band, but you can buy that nylon band sold separately if you want to have this one, or you can choose to have another one if you don't want to have the base model, uh, this one. Um, yeah, so you won't have much more uh, unless you are military, uh, those feature you might want to have it but you won't have much more um personally i prefer the look of the tactics i think it, it i think it's look it looked better both both look great uh, the buttons are also better um but both look great they are just different so that's really up to you if you think the tactics look better and you're not a military uh it's really up to you to say yourself is it worth it to put more money to have uh, the watch that I think look the best it's really really up to you but it's the same watch it does the same thing except for the military option the next point is about how easy it is to use the watch uh, I would say it would depend of the kind of user if you're not used to use electronic old device you may have a hard time to use it because there is a lot of option there is a lot of menu there is a lot of sub menu and sub sub menu and sub 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 menu there's a lot of option everywhere you are you have option if i'm uh <laughs> If I'm here pressing an old menu button, I have access to the watch face option. If I'm here pressing the back button, I've got to reorder glance and those things. But if I go inside uh, my sleep track and go inside the menu, I've got other menu for alarms and those things. There is menus everywhere. And if you are worried about this, well, just don't worry. You don't need to use those menu. You can simply use the watch as it as it's built and it works very well i read often that some people don't buy that watch because they won't use uh, more than 10 percent of it and in fact you will probably not use more five percent of what it's able to do it's able to do a lot of things but why do you worry about that you don't need to worry about something that you will not use you better have something that you won't use in the watch that not having something that you need this watch just do everything everything a watch everything you want a gps watch to do those watch just do it so for me it's a no-brainer <laughs> you take that watch and but and not not everybody is is the same for me it's a no-brainer i take that one it just does everything i use a lot of options because i did uh, navigate inside those menu to learn it uh by hearth 
uh, to do those tutorials that I'm doing. By the way, uh, this is a review video. It's not a tutorial video. Uh, it's not yet record, but uh, you can go into the playlist just right here. There is a lot of uh, tutorial about Phoenix watches, and I will do a full uh, tutorial about uh, those watches. Um, so, yes, there's a lot of things you can do, and don't worry about that. You just don't need to use it if you worry about that simply use it you press the start button you select your activity and you start it and at the end you stop it and and that's it that's it and you have your watch you have those information it's not complicated to use um, but if you want to dive deeply inside every option you can personalize this watch like crazy now let's talk about connection uh, you have a Wi-Fi antenna you have a Bluetooth antenna and you have an ANT plus antenna uh, so the Wi-Fi is used to download your music download your map is made to sync your watch to uh, Garmin connect uh, Bluetooth is also made to sync with Garmin connect but over your phone it's also used to connect uh, other uh, wireless device such as a uh, HR belt hearth rate belt uh, if you don't want to use the hearth rate at the back you can use a, a belt um, you can also sing some other things if you want to connect to a Zwift application and those kind of things you can do that over Bluetooth and you have some other older device that still use ANT plus well it's available right here another thing that I love about that watch is the USB connection because every Garmin watch use the very same USB connection at the back and it's very well done because it's that simple cable you don't need to think about the side the side you will connect it you just connect it it clip inside and it's very solid you can shake it like crazy and it never felt it just stick into there and it's very good so so yeah that's the usb connection that i love it's a simple cable there you don't have a huge chuck chunk chunky uh, uh something it's, it's just simple it's connect inside it and that's it now let's talk about synchronization synchronization is done very fast uh, at the end of my activity usually I wait between 10 and 15 seconds and it's synced online I don't have to do anything once I stop my activity it just sync to my uh, phone on the Garmin Connect app and that's it otherwise I could go right here inside uh, if I don't have a phone, I can go inside connectivity, Wi-Fi, and it's right there. Wi-Fi sync, and it will sync my activity. So I can go see it uh, on internet, on uh, Garmin Connect web page, or on Strava if I'm connected to it. Uh, or you can also use the cable, if you would like, uh, to connect it to Garmin Express on your computer to sync it, again, with Garmin Connect. You have three options, uh, but the one that most people will use over bluetooth through your phone it just works so fast you don't have to think about that it's already sync when you're done yeah when you're done with the activity earlier we have seen the option live track uh live track is an option i told you that i will come back on this uh, live track is an option that when i do start an activity it simply share my location to a list of con of contact uh, so if something happened to me or if I want somebody to know where I am or if I do something public and I want people to know where I am, well, that's available. If someone of your family is out for a ride and you want to know when he will come back, uh, well, you can know where he is or where she is and, well, you can uh, prepare the dinner and whatever huh? use it as you want but that's a very great option actually I just start my activity and my list of contact that I want them to know I receive an email to say hey I am on the right and click on the following link and this is where I am of course for this to work you need to have your phone and Garmin connect with you with an internet connection it doesn't take a lot of data very very few data and yeah it works very well oh Another thing that is very well done is uh, the training, uh, the strength 
exercise. So let's say that I take uh, this one, for example. You have a lot of uh, training that you can follow. You can go in Garmin Connect and select a special training. You can create uh, yourself a training. You can manually create them. And let's say I want to do the workout. Well, let's hit start. You can come here and we should have right there, I think, an animation of what I have to do. Shall we? Oh, yes. oh yeah, I need to start. All right. And right there, I have my animation. Look good. So instead of just having a name, if you, you're not familiar with that, you got an animation. You also got it on the Phoenix model. So if I come here and oops strength i'll do the same thing maximize upper body start the activity i should have the animation right there it's look good on both of them maybe a little bit better on the on the apex because it have a better screen but still it looks very good so you know how to do that activity. Very, very well done. So I will stop that workout on both of them and just discard it. So you will have some surprise here and there in few application. Uh, this one is in workout is very well made uh, i know there is also one into golf and on which you will be able to see your golf course uh, what par it is and very very well done again you may find some surprise in uh, some activity just like that now let's talk about the app the app is this one uh, that's the one we have on the phone but you can also find an equivalent on uh, the um, the web page and you've got your burp. you've got your day just right here uh, average earth rate uh, rest earth rate max earth rate uh, calories burn those kind of things the last activity you done uh, yesterday your uh, past uh, weeks or those kind of things you have access to a calendar uh, you got access to your performance stats, view to max, those kind of things. You can create itinerary. Uh, so if you want to go somewhere, you can create an itinerary inside here and follow it on your watch. Uh, you have, uh, oh, you have also, I, I forget to, I forget to talk about it while I was speaking of the map, but you also have the Garmin Explore app that you can use. Oh, let's do this. Let's do this. If I go into sport and... <clears throat> Garmin Explore, just right here. And I want to go there. So I will uh, want to say go with my Garmin Apex. That's the one that is, seems to be connected right now. Navigation. Well, actually, this navigation to select location. Again. Go. Garmin Apex. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yes, it did send it here. And now I need to say how I want to go there so I will say by running and then it will create me an itinerary just like that eventually like that calculating and now do I see yeah you see there's the blue line just right there <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> that I need to follow to reach my point. Very well done, again. <laughs> um, okay, so let's come back to that Garmin uh, Connect app. Uh, you got option for safety and tracking if you want to uh, set people that may receive email or text message if you have an accident. It will detect it if you have an accident. Uh, you have a lot of options inside here. I won't go uh, everywhere inside that because the video will last a day. Uh, but you have all of those options from here on the phone app. And you got it also on 
the web page that's really up to you. The next point is about customer service. And that's a thing that Garmin should improve. I did talk with uh, many um, customer service of watch brand recently and you know, I would say it's the worst. Um, it's not this bad, but the answer was really slow and not so satisfying. Uh, I have to recall and uh, it was not the best, really, really not the best. Uh, but it's not terrible. They're just the less good. So there we are. Final thoughts. Um, <laughs> which one is the right for you? Uh, I think it's a personal choice. I can't tell it to you. Uh, you have to base on what I've told you in the last minutes or hour uh, <laughs> to, to make your choice. I think they are all great watch. Anyone you take here is a good choice. They are the same watch, except that this one have a beautiful screen and those one have a bigger screen with a flashlight and a bigger battery. It's really, really up to you. But yes, it's a hard choice between the flashlight, the battery life and the screen size against that beautiful display. I thought I would hate that display and I love it. Every time I use it and I come back to one of those watch, I hate the screen of those one. But after some time you get used to it, you still see it very well, uh, but not as this, not as much as this one. But when I come back to this one, I miss the flashlight. So battery life is important, but still it have a great battery life, but it's not comparable to those one. Um, yeah, so yes, in survival mode, those two watch are better, but in everyday usage, well, that one is uh, mind blowing. Seriously, the screen of this one, this watch is amazing. So yeah, final word, they are three watch that I do recommend and you can't go wrong with any of them. So, well. Do as you wish. Sorry, <laughs> uh, but well, my the, the watch that I will keep using uh, as a personal watch is uh, the Garmin Tactics, just because of its size, the battery life, and of course the flashlight. That's the reason why I'm using that one over that one. But it's a close one. It's a very very close one. And again, uh, finally, if you want to buy one of those watch, please use my link in the description as I will do a commission out of it. And that do really help me to uh, continue doing those video and buy other watch to review. So this is it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. And if you need help to find this product online, please see my links in the description. And finally, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you're looking for a great review video. See ya.